Hello everyone, this is Malka Asad, and welcome to the last part of the case report series. In this episode, we'll go over the journal selection, which is an important part of the publication process. There are different kinds of journals that you can publish case reports in that can be classified in two main groups. The first one are the case report journals, and the second one is the specialty journals. And by case report journals, I mean journals that publish only case reports. And studies have found over 160 case report journals by 2015, and I think they're much more now because they're increasing rapidly. And the majority of these case report journals are open access. Some case report journals publish all the fields of medicine. So they publish surgery case reports, medicine case reports, but some are specialized case reports. So they publish only cardiology case reports or medicine case reports. So there are a variety of these journals. And as I said, the majority of them are open access. The specialty journals on the other side are generally not open access, which means they are free to uh, publish in, but generally they're much harder than the case report journals because these journals publish different kinds of articles and it's very, very hard to publish a case report in this kind of journals unless the case report is very unique. So it's possible, but it's much harder than the case report. The advantage for these journals is that most of the time you don't need to pay. So you save the publication fees. And generally I prefer to publish my case reports in these journals because they are more respected in the field. And we'll talk about the different criteria that you will be looking at when choosing a journal. So how you can find a journal and what you should be looking for when you're comparing journals. Google can be a good way to start. You can type, uh, for example, if your article is in uh, cardiology, you can type cardiology journals to start and see the different journals that publish cardiology uh, articles. And then you can look for cardiology case report journals or medicine case report journals. So search all these terms and see what you will find in Google and then go to the journal websites and see if they publish case reports because many of the journals, special, especially the specialty journals, as I mentioned, they don't publish case reports or they publish in a very uh, selective way. So you can find all this information on the journal website. You, Google is a good way to start, but you have to check the journal website afterwards. Another way is asking your mentors. Your mentors can be familiar with journals that publish case reports or uh, that don't. So for example, if you chose a journal that your mentor uh, is aware that the journal does not accept this kind of articles, you can avoid the submission and the rejection from these journals. Asking your friends, your friend might have published a similar case report or a case report in a similar area and can guide you about possible journals that can be targeted. The journal fees are a very important aspect to look for, especially for case reports. Because as I said, there are hundreds of case report journals and the majority of them are open access. And by open access means everyone can access these journals. The journal does not charge uh, subscriptions for readers to see the articles. And in this situation, you will be paying for uh, the publication uh, fees. So make sure that if you're willing to pay these fees, because the fees vary and sometimes they're in thousands of dollars. So make sure you have that amount of money to publish the article in the respective journal. Some journals have country waivers, and I will cover that, which means if you are from a certain country, you might not need to pay, even if the journal has journal fees. And sometimes there are institutional waivers. So for example, if your institution comes from a hospital that the journal has a relationship with, you might not be required to pay money. What should you be looking when you're comparing journals? So you find a list of journals, you ask your friends, your mentors, and now you're down, let's say, to 10 journals. How can you compare these journals? First, make sure that the journal is PubMed indexed, which means when your article is published, it will go on PubMed. Second, the respect within the field. 
And this is something that your mentor can guide you in because some journals are known to be of high quality articles, high quality review process, and they have high respect in that specific field compared to other, other journals. The target audience, because you don't want to publish your article about a cardiology case report in the surgery journals. So you have to be careful about the target audience and see what kind of articles the journal published. The review process, because now I'll talk about predatory journals, and you will see that some journals do not respect the review process. You have to look for this information online and see if the journal has a clear peer review process. Contact information also. Impact factor, not all uh, case report journals have impact factor. The specialty journals have impact factor usually, but the case report journals might not. So if the journal has an impact factor, that's a good sign. But if it's not, not all journals have it. Predatory journals, these are journals that ask you for money, so you pay publication fees, but they don't have a clear and high quality review process, which means you can publish the article, you can uh, add it on your CV, but honestly, it does not mean anything. And I know so many students who don't have publications and want to add things on their CV and they're willing to do that, but that's not gonna help much, especially when you apply to residency or to jobs, people will evaluate your CV, will you look at the journals you published in, and if they see a journal that they don't recognize or a journal that is known just to take money and publish anything, that won't be a good situation. There are, I will make a different uh, video about the predatory journals and how you can identify them. But here I just want to touch on that briefly. Uh, there are several websites and organizations that have the high quality open access journals, the one that you pay fees for. So you make sure that the journals are in these societies and, or these organizations. You can look at the editorial board. If you see respected names on the editorial board, that's also a good sign. For example, if you see a chair of a big institution, well-known institution who is on the editorial board of that journal, that could be a good sign. Now I wanna talk about the journal fees, and I just took a screenshot from the Journal of case report, Surgical Case Reports. Generally, the fees are under the author guidelines, so I just click on the author guidelines, and I went here to journal charges and copyright, and I got this list. So you can see here, these are the charges for the articles, but the journal has a different fees for the developing countries. So I looked at the, I clicked on that and I got the list. There are free access countries. So if your country belongs to any of these countries, you can submit to this journal without any fees. And if your country belongs to any of these, you would pay but reduced fee. So always make sure that uh, your country belong if your country belongs to any of these countries and you can waive the fees you can look at different journals for example if you found 10 journals and one of them has a waiver for your country you can submit to that journal bmj for example case reports has a different uh, model of payment they have something called fellowship fee where you get a 12 month fellowship and you can submit as many articles as you like during that period and you pay for a yearly subscription they have something else called institutional uh, fellowship where the institution pays a subscription annually and anyone from that institution can submit articles to bay mj and get if they get accepted they get published for free so make sure that your institution uh, if your institution has such subscriptions, and you can avoid the fees for these journals. You generally can ask the library, have this kind of information if you want to know if your institution is part of this. And this is how you can subscribe to be an individual fellow or institutional fellow for BMJ case reports. An important question is, do I need an IRB for case reports? 
let's go back to the definition of uh, research and which projects need an IRB. This is a slide from my first video on the responsible research conduct. And in order to qualify for, for IRB, you need to fulfill the criteria of research and human subjects. Generally, case reports are on human subjects, so this criteria is fulfilled. But what about research? Research is defined as a systematic investigation that can lead to generalizable knowledge. And generally, one case cannot need, and generally, one case does not lead to generalizable knowledge. So, generally, you can say that case reports do not need an IRB. I recommend always checking with the institution because the regulations vary, but generally a case report of one patient or two or three patients do not need an IRB. The patient consent, generally it's recommended to ask the patient consent before submitting their case to a publication. However, if you're including identifying information, for example, the face, you have to ask the patient and take their approval and preferably a written one. Because in these situations, you are identifying the patient, their face will appear in the publication. So you have to have the patient's approval. BMJ case reports ask for the patient approval even if you don't have their faces, for example. So they ask the patient's signature and your signature before submitting the paper to publication. Again, the, the, the guidelines vary between journals, but it's always best to take the patient consent. That brings us to the end of our case report series. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. If you like it, subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Malki Asad. Thank you so much for watching and see you in future episodes.